Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Hemda. This Sunday, Hemda. Yes. We celebrate 16 years of podcasting. Longer than I've done anything in my life. And that includes marriage. Relationships, jobs. It is. It's the longest thing I've ever done. We started March 7th, 2005. And here's the secret. We never said for better or worse. We said, <laughs> right. And we said, I guess another one. That's and that's the secret. Uh, tag Keith and the girl. So uh, and share your Keith and the girl stories. OK, that's at Keith and the girl on all social media platforms. If it sounds overwhelming, if you're new to Keith and the girl, hey, how do I catch up with what's going on? Don't worry. We have a we have a skill set. You, you won't be too confused, but you can go to Keith and the girl dot com slash awards and see 26 extended episodes that uh, where you'll see what the audience loved, like uh, most uh, most romantic moment of the year, most heartbreaking moment, saddest, funniest, goofiest, this kind of thing. Everything uh, to catch up is at Keith and slash awards. And I'm real uh, happy about that page. Also, a new silent trailers game show is about to happen. Tickets are on sale now. So far, confirmed guests are Michael Ian Black and Pete Holmes. So get your tickets at keithandthegirl.com slash tickets. And for this event, we also have a limited amount of backstage tickets. You've heard about this, the uh, behind the scenes goofiness, the shenanigans, if you will, that go on before the show. Be part of it. Details at keithandthegirl.com slash tickets. And of course, if you're a VIP member where you hear all 16 years of Keith and the Girl shows, every show we've ever done, all the spinoff shows that's in your VIP package. You also get free tickets uh, to these events. OK, so go to Keith and the Girl slash VIP, become a VIP member, get your free ticket right now. And again, limited amounts of backstage uh, backstage passes. Keith and the Girl slash tickets. You excited about this week on Hemda? We're going to we always have a nice uh, we have a nice dinner. We spend more money than we normally would. We're not that kind of people. We do that once a year. And now we're going to be doing it in front of our uh, computers separately. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of a logistical weirdness. And it also marks about a year ago was the last time I saw you as well. So yeah. that was the last meal we had together, the last like social interaction we had together. And I think we recorded two days after that. And then uh that was it. We can't even high five anymore. But I have really good plans for this weekend for the 16 year anniversary on Saturday. Tomorrow, I'm going to celebrate with Xerxes. We got edibles and we're going to get high as fuck. We're going to watch Coming to America, which we were going to go see in the movie theater. We're not movie theater people. We've been looking right. forward to this. We both grew up in Queens like it was an event. And so we're going to spend the day just, you know, drooling on each other. And then on Sunday, of course, we have our fancy dinner. Which look is so faking that he found a place. Oh, my God. Let me tell you a little behind the scenes thing. He's such an asshole. OK, this is like a moment where we get to be like, "Ooh, we're going to go to the fancy restaurant. And like, now look at the prices. We're just going to get what we want. And I'm like, Keith, you're assigned to find an experience that can happen via the Internet with COVID. I'm sure some steakhouses are, you know, having some kind of like, this is what you do to still experience this. And he's like, I'm on it. And it gets closer to the date. And, you know, if he found something, he'd be so excited that he's emailing me, calling me, like starting to make, you know, decisions on which food and and go and, and saying things like, oh, I'm going to play it like this and like that, just like he does with his Costco shopping cart. Like, look how much I'm winning. Nothing. And I know why, because he hasn't found shit. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, maybe you need help. You know, you're doing that thing where you said you would do it. And then you think you have enough information. You want to ask for more information. But that means that you didn't try yet. And you have to accept failure and ask for help. And you're not doing it. And yes, I am afraid that come four o'clock on Sunday, we're supposed to order the food at five, four o'clock on Sunday, you're going to be like, hey, um, you know, Kyle told me a place, but it turns out that was the supermarket. So blah, 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 blah. And then I'm going to be like, of course, let's just make a steak at home and I'll see you again. Mm -hmm. So uh, and now, Your Honor, that was my opening remarks. Please, uh, Keith Malley. And we're celebrating 16 years. Together. <laughs> <laughs> now so I'm, I'm making you a turkey, Hunda, now that oh, I know how. Shit. Okay. It's going to be fun. By the way, uh, <laughs> reviews are out now, of course, for coming to America, too. 
Don't even tell me. I know it's bad. I know it's going to be bad. It's going to be the worst. We're going to laugh at it the whole time. It's going to be references to the first one. It's made for people like me who are like, I'm going to watch it no matter how bad it is. So go ahead and tell me. And if you're telling me it's good, it's by like three Queens people that are just like me sitting at home going like, please entertain me with anything. And that's going to be the only good review and go. Just double your edible dose. Is what I'm reading. <laughs> we got a new coffee pot today. Okay? <laughs> uh, let's introduce to you today's guest. You love him. I know I do. I know Hemda does. Is that true, by the way? Hemda, right? I don't want to speak for you, but you love these people, right? Oh, do I get to speak for myself now? 16 years. <laughs> Holy <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> uh, his dry bar comedy special. It's called Dating Over 40 is like thrift store shopping. Wow. Wow. OK. Give it just, that name. No, no, no. We're still introducing you. Yeah, you could Google <laughs> dry bar comedy. Uh, it's approaching two million views on YouTube, three and a half million on Facebook. And he's the CACA winner for most romantic moment. The 16 women fantasy love Kumite. Joe DeVito. Hi, how are hey, you buddy? guys? Good. Good. Uh, Seems like there's a little tension approaching 16 years together. Listen, we're teenagers. You know, sweet 16 is like the terrible twos, isn't it? Come on. You're not uh, a parent. You could make assumptions like I do. <laughs> also uh, joining us, we saw her on uh, Westworld and HBO. Big scene at the end. I saw this very, very exciting stuff with the main guy. <laughs> uh, stand up on A Little Late on Lily Singh. Suba Agarwal. How you doing, Suba? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Uh, are you are you holding up OK during the pandemic? Do you see an end to it? I just passed a restaurant and everybody's sitting right next to each other. Yeah, 25 percent capacity, but they shove them all in one place so they can just hire one worker and they don't have to clean up so much. Suba, you don't have to answer that. It was obviously a setup for him to talk to you about the restaurants <laughs> in his neighborhood. He's ridiculous. He uses this platform to just spew out his get off my lawn in New York City where he has no lawn. But please, how are you doing? I'm good. And I, I prefer that to uh, the other version of bouncing a question off of somebody like are your did you do something different with your eye makeup or is that just me? I think it's just me. Is my highlighter really nice? <laughs> like I <Right>. prefer. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I've been in You've LA been too in long. LA, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm fine. I just had to stop thinking about the future because like I would literally go and say like I've gotten really into meditation and like just being in the moment because if I <laughs> if I think about the future, I tell you what, I'm jumping right out that fucking window. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Joe? Well, you know, I I decided to do some research and I I looked up the 1918 pandemic because I, I hadn't heard anybody mm -hmm. say how it ended, only that it ended. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Also, did you check to see how like their internet was probably like shoddy back then, right? That was hard. Oh, Netflix was terrible back then. Right. Very yeah, limited like, choices. You still had to get the DVDs in the mail back in 1918. Yeah. And DVDs were two people coming into your place and putting on the play in the backyard. They did. It was yeah. mostly puppets. Uh, here's what I found out. Um, they don't know how it ended, just kind of stopped. So, hmm. I don't know if that makes me feel good or makes me feel bad. But oh they, um, <laughs> right? how many how long did it last? It seems like these things take about 18 months to burn through. And All right, that, guys, six more months. Well, but I think now <laughs> that we've got um, we've got the vaccines, which seem to be getting um, good reviews on Yelp. Right. So I don't know. I, I you know, I, I think. I'm more positive than I was uh, when I decided to turn off thinking about it. So I think by the time we get to the summer, I think things are going to be okay. I mean, I'm seeing signs of things opening up. Um, you heard it here first. Joe thinks we're going to be okay by summer. Listen, I know Joe <laughs> we a very good life during this pandemic. Last time we spoke to you, you got a couch, right? Like an adult. <laughs> I got a couch. Let me tell you something. I got a new bed and a new mattress. Wow. wow. So, wow. yeah, you know, things are really there are parts of this that have been actually kind of good for me that um, I see you that know. you had time to focus on things like uh, couches. What's what's bad about getting a couch at a certain age is that you can't really brag to chicks about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a mattress. Because, huh? you know, it does. It does ask the question, what what was I sitting on up until now, right. <laughs> which, was, uh, you know, Mill crates and stacks of newspapers and and things like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, so I've I've actually grown up. How ironic! So many people during this um, 
you know, you lose a few lives, but um, hey, my numbers are up on views on my special. So I guess it all balances out, doesn't what it? What kind of Alanis irony is that? What? You know, she did not mention anything ironic in her song. It still and sticks in my craw. I did not. <laughs> Maybe it's divine providence was what I was looking for. So the past uh, couple of days I was staying at uh, Kyle's place. I was watching her cat and the kids uh, turtles and fish. I mean, not really staring at him like a weirdo, <laughs> but uh, feed him here and again. And uh, th- me and I'm fighting with the cat now. There was a uh, do either of you have cats? I have two of them. OK, maybe Somewhere. you could maybe you can help me. Tell me how I make peace with this fucking asshole. It's so a again, Suba, <laughs> Suba, it's a setup. <laughs> There's a there is like a like a liter bottle of soda I had on the table. The cats across. the Oh, room. you mm. brought a liter bottle of soda to Kyle's. Place. <laughs> I, I, I she's that. she's away. I could do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> OK, yeah, I'm, I'm partying. It's Sprite, full sugar. Wow. And the bottle fell off the table. The cat was on the couch, speaking of couches. And the cat jumps off the couch, scared, hides underneath the hide underneath the couch. Then I, I start coming over like, oh, cat, you OK? <laughs> Heath, I've never seen before. That was yesterday. I just left there this afternoon. From then to now, this cat has hated me. And I I turned the corner later on, like a couple hours later, reached out, scratched me, scratched on my foot. This cat is an old cat. It's the claw before we knew better. What what is scratching me? I don't know. But if I had claws, I'd be dead. This. So I looked up. How do you make friends with a cat on Google? And it says you don't. (laughs) <laughs> no one can. No, what comes now, up? You know what I think happened is um, recently we had a couple podcasts where Keith was telling us how shitty cats are and how dogs are the best and everybody knows it. And I think this cat was a fan, and mm. this is their way of unsubscribing. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I, it, there's something like if the cat gets startled, does it end up hating you, Suba? Um, I think it really depends on the cat. That cat just kind of sounds like a dick. Like yeah. they're, they're they're a lot like people, you know. Like I have two very very friendly cats, so I'm pretty lucky. But no, normally they get over it in a little bit. But I think this cat just hates you as an individual. I don't think it has anything to do with being startled. I, w- yeah, you I should wish... personalize it for yourself. I- I'd rather have one of those. Uh, I-, I had to watch one of those cats from the stupid movie. This fucking cat <laughs> that I have now. Such attitude. And uh, when I look up uh, how to make friends with a cat, let them come to you. The most important role when making friends with a cat is to do everything on their terms. Nice. That that sounds like a fun animal to have. They're then great. Why, <laughs> then why are dogs called bitches? What the fuck? Right? <laughs> well, you have to know that the cat doesn't know that Kyle is coming back. Mm. He just knows that she's gone mm. and now you are there bringing your hillbilly sodas into the house. <laughs> So for him, it just is a very his whole life has been disrupted. But maybe think- maybe the cat is actually a digital toy and Kyle can see that you're drinking that soda. That's why it mm. actually fell. And that's why it's hissing mm. at you. Mm. An arc on you. I like cats, but I, I know that whenever someone who doesn't like cats asks me to explain what's great about them, a few minutes of explaining, I start to think, you know, you're right. They are kind of assholes. Right. They, uh, they don't th- they don't care for me, but once in a while they do. Yeah. Yay. What's his and name? Six Harry? million dollars because you, you, you got a leg sprain. I've met That's... that cat. He's a nice cat. Well, did you he drop it? You didn't business. drop nothing. Good well, for I'm you. not there throwing liters of uh, Mountain Dew and, uh, <laughs> you know, RC Cola, whatever cheap dollar store <laughs> shit you were drinking. I don't, I don't blame him. <laughs> well, who would blame him? He's got a good racket going there. Some weirdo shows up. <laughs> Rule number get two: diabetic in his house. Rule number two: way. be small and quiet. Rule number three: <laughs> slow blink at them. Get the fuck out of here. Keep dogs for life. Sorry, Suba. I hope they don't hear. This is a total side note, but if you look at the history of our 16 years of recording, six million is always Keith's number. And then I got to do some <laughs> things. Right. He has like he's a. Uh, uh, what do you call those? God damn it. It would have been great. Just know <laughs> great thing right there. OK, uh, have you seen him to the movie Nomadland movie of the year? You were going to review it for everybody. I've never seen a bigger piece of shit in my life. I saw some of it this morning. I saw the first hour and, you know, 
you know, I want to love it so they can argue with you. And I don't know why mm-hmm. I'll have to work that out. Right. Betterhealth.com slash gay TG. Um, so I, I want to, I know that there are movies that you're going to hate that I'm going to love and they're going to be slow and ridiculous. And I'm going to see way too much info that they didn't even write in there because I want to feel something. And I was there for that. And I was like, Oh, this acting is amazing. Actually, if anyone won acting awards, fantastic. She you know didn't, that- which was funny to me. Nomad land with the recent golden globes. One best director, best movie drama uh, and a couple other things. But she, Frances McDormand, didn't win Best Actress. And it's all about following her walking around the desert. What an insult that's got to be to Frances McDormand, right? Like everything was great, except, you know, the person doing it. And, And the thing is, is the person doing it was the best part of the movie. Her acting was so amazing. You know, I I wonder, like, as an actor, you could say the words and emote the feelings, but when people can act with just their face and not words, where you can see the reaction and they're like from behind their eyes, they're acting is like, oh my God, how do you do that? You're such an actor. You were definitely born. That's how I felt while watching this. And all the actors I thought was like on par with that. Great, great, great acting. But I saw an hour of this. That could have been condensed and I could have edited it myself. 10 minutes. You show Amazon <laughs> that fucking 10 minute commercial for Amazon. What was you that sh- about? She worked at Amazon for a minute. What, what did that, that have to do with anything? And by the way, it's so you would think you would get the movie on Amazon Prime. You don't. The movie was done. They're like, sell it to Hulu. Get the fuck out of here. Like, yeah. really? You already gave us money. I don't even want you taking up the space. I don't know. Maybe it's like modern times. It's like the new slave. You know what I mean? Not slave is a strong word, but it's like, um, this is the new factory system, the new um, the new poor, the new um, jobs that don't uh, appreciate. You're just one in whatever, you know. So, yeah, strike slavery. The rest of it I stand by. <laughs> um, and and I think uh, it, Xerxes was saying this. This should really just be an embarrassment to our country about what like our responses to old people, to people who have worked forever, for people who, you know, have to just die because they have cancer and they don't have enough money to like all that stuff. That's how we should be feeling about this movie. But yeah, there was the Amazon scene, the thing in the desert where she meets those people to learn how to do things. And, you know, like something's going to happen between the guy, I assume, because I've seen that guy in other movies. So I knew he was going to come back. That's it. I assume something happens between her and that guy. It doesn't. Spoiler, it doesn't. Nothing happens at all. You're free now. So I saw the whole movie. Yeah, you did. (laughs) No. Who else saw it? Did you guys see it? No. No, but I I heard the same thing. I heard it was really boring, but that the acting was incredible. That's basically what I've been hearing from people. Also, the Golden Girl Globes are supposedly like super corrupt. So maybe Frances McDormand just didn't pay for a nice enough hotel room for them. Maybe it's her <laughs> fault. Right. <laughs> As she took him to that uh, RV in the movie and she's like sitting in a bucket in front of them like, hey, do I have a shot? Like, no, we're used to hotels. Also, can I ask you why we had to watch her shit that one time? And finally, <laughs> something happened. I don't I was like, OK, maybe because the, then we saw the other woman get sick and I'm like, something's up with this RV life where they're getting sick in the middle of the desert. Like there's like a plant that's making them feel a certain <laughs> way. Now the thing is about to start. And no, 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 we just had to watch her shit in the RV in the camper. Well, hers is a van or whatever. You guys are you making say... this uh, movie sound like a must see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Boring. Francis McDermott shitting in a bucket. So uh, let me. Let me clear I mean, some time on honestly, <laughs> it was romantic, really. Thank you. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was going to say that sounds like a reason for me to tune in. I'm just curious now. I'm like, she really shits in a bucket. I got to see this. Like, <laughs> yeah. When I tell you the acting, I believed her shit. I believe she shat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, you know, most actors are like, eee. I'm like, no, not everybody shits that way. It's a slight discomfort. And then you're calm. Very good. Very good. Maybe they found out she really shat and they're like, that's not acting, though. Right. <laughs> Just had the balls to shit on camera. You're fired. We'll make up the rest of the movie. You walked around enough. We've got enough footage. So here in New York City, movie theaters are opening. And I, you know, honestly, oh, wait, Joe, Um, back in uh, 1918, did they open movie theaters this quickly or? Uh... I don't recall. I think the whorehouses were standing by, though. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, when you think about it, like 1918, 
we have it so much better than they did in 1918. Like they were just coming out of the first world war and they were like, let's have a parade. And then everybody got a plague at the parade. Right. Wait, who's got a home phone? What's that's me. I'm getting, I don't know if you know this. I'm going to guess. Um, they're telling me that my auto service can be, uh, restored. Your, your, uh, your car for your car. That's wild. A home phone. Oh my God. I haven't seen one of those. (laughs) Yeah, I know. She, she wasn't so... this impressed with your couch and your bed. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I went to pick it up, the whole thing came up in one piece because I hadn't used it in so long that the phone didn't even detach from the base. I know why you have a home phone. It's because they sold you on a bundle, isn't it? You know, they wouldn't let me get rid of it. You think That's I, not I, a thing, Joe. That's not a thing. First no. you get a couch and you get a bed and then tell you, you find I... out the customer service doesn't tell you what to do. It's not just that. It's my parents think that the cell phone is only to be used in case of an emergency or if you want to launch a <laughs> nuclear missile. Oh, so, so if you get rid of that home phone, they stop calling you. Joe, so many reasons. They think I've died. <laughs> no, they will not use the cell phone. I promise you they will if that's their only phone number. I, to I don't want to push you. my luck. Also, I heard an answering machine. Joe, come on. <laughs> you have a new couch and a new bed. What? You're going to be in like one of those stupid movies where you just started making love to the woman of your dreams. And then your mother calls and on the answering machine, Joe, I didn't want to try <laughs> your cell phone because I just thought that's for emergency. Are you OK? You, technically, up? you could tell me that that phone number is a landline yeah. and I'll call the goddamn cell phone. You just don't have to tell me. Also, I've sent you five dollars. That should cover your <laughs> bill, right? Someone also recently seems to have given my number out to um some sort of uh, air conditioning repair fraud scheme. So now that they're calling me asking for someone else, they've added to my list of telemarketers. Although uh, because of, um, you know, I don't have a whole lot going on these days. I've been torturing some telemarketers. I've been wasting their time. Mm. That's kind of fun. I got one to curse at me. What's your (laughs) go-to? This guy was calling me saying he was from, uh, it was the one where they say that your social security account is being suspended. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then I okay. asked him for details and he's clearly calling from a call center, uh, you know, uh, on the other <laughs> side of the planet. And he, um, you could hear he, his landline, right? <laughs> yes. I could hear his, my mother was calling him asking what was going on. <laughs> he said that, um, he asked me if I've ever been to Texas and I said, well, as a matter of fact, I have. And he said, Oh, well, uh, they found a rental car full of drugs. And I no. said, well, that sounds serious. But why would the Social Security Administration be calling me about that? And he went, you motherfucker, you son of stupid son of a bitch. And he started cursing. And I said, that doesn't sound like the kind of language a government employee should be using. And then he, he hung up on me. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah they sometimes get, was, they they'll get ask angry. You to pay, yeah. They'll ask you to pay by going down to get a, a Best Buy gift card and reading the numbers to them. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's why whenever I hear somebody who fell for it, unless they're very elderly, I think it's, your, it's the tax you pay for being stupid. No, that's not fair, because I don't know that people know that there's um, like a way that government and and your bank and all these, you know, high security places. There's a very specific way that they're not allowed to get in touch with you. I think that you can. And they might need a Best Buy card. Yeah. And let me tell you, like. I uh, I was doing this like charity thing where I was like uh, calling the elderly just to make sure they knew about the vaccine and about delivery services, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, let me tell you, they're tired of being scammed. They were mad. <laughs> yeah. they were mad. I was oh. like, ma'am, I'm just trying to make sure you know how to get the vaccine. She's like, who are you? I was like, right. Uh, let me guess. You need Ethel. a TGI Friday's card. Fuck you. Did, did you Ethel, tell them the so sheriff sorry. was on the way? That's the one they they told me the sheriff was on his way. I thought the sheriff, very, that's good to know. Is the deputy coming with him? (laughs) No, he was the one shot. (laughs) Is it does it get frustrating like these these you're trying to save lives and these old people are yelling at you? I think it's hilarious. I mean, I did ask them to get me a TGI Fridays gift card. I'm like, look, you need this to register. Now I'm fucking right. But um, no, I think old people are funny. I remember uh, phone banking. Well, my ex was phone banking for uh, Bernie Sanders. And the very first call she got, uh, they were like, fuck you, you cunt, you dumb bitch. He's a socialist, you piece of shit, commie cunt. And she's like, OK, that was my first call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, bless her heart. But if I'm getting a call from anybody's side, I'm just like, how'd you get my number? And why do you think I'm interested in talking to you? It's yeah. just I 
I, why are we picking up our calls? You you will be dying and have to text me because I can no longer pick up my call. There are calls coming in that just say spam risk. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. are how is the phone operation working that way? Like how what's happening? Yeah, the do not call list is it doesn't work. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. They just start over. It's not like they're yeah. calling from the same scamming system. They just keep starting over. Did you guys see that? It looks like Jay Johnston from uh, Mr. Show. He does a voice in the Bob's Burgers. He was the cop in the Sarah Silverman program. It looks like he was at uh, the Capitol and the FBI is looking for. I saw the, that. The I didn't know he was. The FBI is still seeking information on people who took part in the violence at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. If you know this individual, visit tips.fbi.gov. And the photo looks uh, looks exactly like him. And so far, it can't be verified that it isn't. Why are they looking specific for him? The, he w it looks like he stormed the Capitol and caused damage. Oh, so he's just oh. amongst the people who yeah. stormed the Capitol. But but did enough damage where they're taking the time to find this guy. He's a person of interest, you're saying? Yes. I yeah. saw uh, this wasn't my thought. This was like I saw a couple of comics commenting on how sad it was that you could have like 25 year history of being on TV and the FBI yeah. still has to go. Does anyone know who the fuck this is? <laughs> <laughs> that's the insult. Yeah, that's it's me. Favorite. I'm that's here. Hilarious. It's me. Does it count as a credit? Can you put that in your resume? <laughs> Uh, second hand accounts say that Johnston has told friends that he was in D.C. that day to attend the rally, which preceded the attack on Capitol Police. So that sounds like him to me then. Right. You, I'm, I was just yeah. there for the rally. First of all, then you're a piece of shit also. But uh, you, you, you it looks like you went inside. No, yeah, just if they got rally. pictures of you inside. That's not good. Right. It well, it's like not like he, he was at the gift shop. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he was wearing a mask. Am I right? Or uh, they have him without he, the mask and a mask. Yeah. And oh, it's I like, it, it, it's so dumb. Like, if you're committing a crime, why would you have your whole face out? Like, it's so. <laughs> you, you get a break now, right? Yeah. I used to just think it was SoundCloud rappers that were that stupid. That was like literally video and rap about the crimes they were committing. But no, right. it's also QAnon and MAGA and all these morons. Well, you can't scream with a mask, you know. Mm. You're you spitting wanna, on yourself. You want to see that uh, anger? Yeah, that's something. And then you'd like it's so weird that we we would like to think that everyone who's made us laugh has a good heart, because otherwise, how right. would they touch ours in such a specific way where they turn the garbage that we live through into this hilarious thing that we can laugh at from the same point of view? You're storming the castle like now I want you to do a bit for five minutes about storming the castle so that you can show me from whatever perspective how that's funny, because we found ways to make so many everything's funny. Right. Where is your like I, I want to know the thought process that tells good jokes is the same thought process that decides to storm the castle is just not fitting for me, but I think maybe that's a dumb way to think just like you know. The, the people that we look up to who are, you know, famously comedians or famously TV anchors or uh, uh, just famous in general were like, well, that scene that they did where they were just the most wonderful husband in the world to their three and, and they had three kids who loved them so much. That can't be the same person who murdered his grandmother. Like, but it can. That person right. just fakes it better. Mm -hmm. So we like I bet it. I bet Francis McDormand uses regular bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> well she had to study for the role somehow right but it is funny i saw i saw this you know the story about jay johnson i'm just like no it's, it's exactly. exactly like you're saying and i'm like you were funny though right how are you <laughs> so funny to my take like you know what's funny about things like and i right. believe everything could be funny you could tell rape jokes as long as you're telling what's actually funny like you're making fun of the shit side of it but if you're telling rape jokes like ah, what was she wearing on the side of, you know, she's just a slut anyway or whatever the fuck. I'm like, oh, yeah, you stormed the castle. Right. That is your thought. But that's fine. You you are the one that storms the castle. I'm good with that. I'm not laughing at your jokes. But if I'm laughing at your jokes, there's something happening there. Yeah, I know. I just feel like I'm numb to it because I've been like, well, 
I didn't realize he was Jimmy Pesto, which all I could think about yeah. was how happy Bob from Bob's Burgers is going to be now that Jimmy's <laughs> <laughs> He's arrested sort of by the can thrive. Right. <laughs> But um, I'm yeah, so no, proud of myself for knowing this reference and like solid. I could laugh and <laughs> feel confident. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I've been lit down by so many celebrities just going absolutely uh, insane. So I'm not like, I don't know. Right. I'm not super sad. I mean, yeah, it's just like shit. We've got a we've got a serious problem with people believing conspiracy yeah. theories and getting radicalized and like to what like right wing terrorism metastasizing. And I'm like, man, I don't know what's happening. The ocean is rising. Like I'm just trying to focus on the moment. <laughs> but maybe maybe <laughs> it's, maybe it it's makes also sense. horrible the most that actors believe in conspiracy theories because they play these roles that make no sense. Like Bruce Willis jumping out of a helicopter and landing on the highway and then jumping right out of the way before the helicopter hits that bridge. And then the thing explodes and he's like, you know, just enough far away from it that he can't even feel the heat that would alone kill him. <laughs> these are crazy scenarios that they're like, yeah, I'm a regular human and I can do that. I'm not even playing the role of like a Batman or like, uh, sorry, Batman doesn't have real, um, powers i understand please don't write letters anyway uh yeah it's a they have to make us believe all of that maybe they just read another script that's a very kind way of saying uh <laughs> actors are dumb and desperately need validation <laughs> and structure i think that's a very yeah i say that as an actor <laughs> uh, you, you get me <laughs> i think and that's I, a problem when you see with a lot of activism from celebrities is that I don't know what it's called, but people who are good in one discipline, something happens in their minds where they think that that then transfers over to other disciplines. Uh, and I think with with actors, it can be really uh, attractive because you're used to portraying someone. So you're and used also, to portraying you, these roles. So you think, well, maybe I do know that. That's true. And you're also celebrated for how yeah. well of a job you did. So it feels invincible. Like when regular people finish a day at work, no one gives a shit. No one's yeah. clapping. No one's like waiting for your autograph. Nobody cares what you look like at work to take a picture. So if you're celebrated for this thing and all you're doing is acting, no offense. Um, that's very inflated. Yes. That's yeah. A good word for it. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. It's like it's all I feel like it's America's obsession with celebrity. Like it's gross. Like the fact that people think Elon Musk knows what the fuck he's talking about just because he's a good businessman. I'm like, he's not the actual scientist. Like y'all are out of your goddamn mind. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, um, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he's not that he's not as um. if you look into his past and like how he got his start and like that is. He was literally like pulling jewels out of his father's safe. You're like, all right, this motherfucker had a massive head start. And also he's head start, generally. Is, isn't he a genius mm, though anyway? Mm, that's debatable because he has so many scientists working underneath him. You know what I mean? But so how, can you even, how can you even talk to a scientist without knowing science things? Well, I mean, you could know it. Maybe I'm just not impressed because I'm everyone in my family is like a PhD scientist. I'm like, oh, I'm, <laughs> like I'm just like, yeah, OK. Uh, did, did your mom well, beat you because you didn't get an A plus plus? OK, like uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to you don't have to be as smart or, uh, you know, even have the same thinking as everybody else. I guarantee uh, Jay Johnston didn't talk about going to the Capitol with people from Mr. Show or Bob's Burgers or who was more liberal mm -hmm. than uh, Sarah Silverman. He kept he kept his uh, he was totally different than the crew he hung out with. Yeah, that's interesting, too. You know, they like these there's crews of um, actors and also especially in the comedy world, there's crews and the crew is more liberal, more Republican, uh, more edgy more uh, like their crews that don't swear like they just kind of run in packs how was he running with bob's burgers they have an actual character who's rich who's just a fucking shithead right. he's just this entitled prick mr i don't know mr i have all the money what's his name suba jimmy pesto <laughs> <laughs> so the you know now he's debating like hey do i stay trending or do i acknowledge if this is or isn't me but if it's you, aren't you proud? That was your God given right to storm the castle. Yeah, but that lasted for a couple of days. You know, then now that they when they started rounding people up, you, you don't want to be, you know, known for it. When you saw in the news, even the right wing shows were saying this is too much. Mm -hmm.
it might be too much, which is funny. I, I remember seeing it as it happened. It happened right before we were doing the Keith and the Girls show and the insurrection. And I'm thinking like, OK, like, yeah, this is going to happen. And then the news, all the channels, Fox, everybody are saying this is this is crazy and disgusting and too much. And I was really surprised. They said things are so fucking nuts that I was surprised that the news thought it was too much and storming the Capitol with the House of Representatives in the Senate. And I'm like, oh, this is too OK. I didn't know this was this is too much. OK, I agree. I remember having a similar feeling that too much thing. Yeah. It's like yeah. if everything is on fire, then they can't profit. Like they just want to <laughs> profit, you know? So it's right. like <laughs> this threatened the entire American government, like the vice president, uh, speaker of the house, like every motherfucker was there and almost got murdered. <laughs> so like everything would have been burnt to the ground. And they're like, oh, that's going to affect our stock prices. So that's when it was like too much, you know? Because right. Tucker Carlson discuss- was like, oh no. <laughs> right. And my and property Tucker- value is going down. And Tucker and his gang and other news hosts, uh, you know, on Fox, let's say uh, they had to look at each other and be like, do we think this is too much? It's too much, right? This is too <laughs> right, much, right? right. Yeah, this is too much. Yeah, I thought so. OK, the way it's the- funny what we <laughs> the words that we've had to use in this last year, pandemic insurrection. Remember <laughs> when California was just on fire every day. Right. <laughs> like, dude, we cannot deal with your shit also. OK, and then they're shooting people. And it's like, well, now we're going out in the streets like so much has happened in this last year. But really just words like pandemic and insurrection, like as like a potential. But to sit in that so crazy. I was hearing in Texas that there's there's a, this theory going around that, you know, they got uh, their power went out because they weren't ready for snow because they don't work with the uh, rest of the country. Uh, people there believe, you know, not most people, I like to hope so, that the snow is from Bill Gates. Everything's from Bill Gates and it's fake and uh, it does. They burn it. They take a lighter to snow. I saw a video and burned it. And they they said, look, it's not melting because they don't understand that it turns into vapor. And I, oh, you don't know the angle, but they know that uh, it's fake snow and Bill Gates. Because uh, my whole blah, blah, thing blah. is like, if you don't believe in science, you should not. I firmly believe you shouldn't be able to access science. You shouldn't have your fucking car. You shouldn't have electricity. Like mm-hmm. if you're going to disrespect science like that, well, you don't get to actively use the products of science like that drives <laughs> me insane. But hold on. If I was Bill Gates, I'd be like, holy shit, you thought I made snow happen. <laughs> Like, are you going to start praying to me? Like, this is a a, a little more respect, because even (laughs) if I did it and I did it for harmful shit, like you need to you need to Google my name a little more. I'm pretty impressed. (laughs) It's a strange combination that we see of people using uh, technology to um, to look up and to spread such strange ideas that you think just using the technology would cancel out that thought that you have, you know? Uh, There was a representative in DC a couple of years ago who was driving around when they got some unexpected snow. I don't think they get snow very much. And he just was casually broadcasting how it it was uh, the Jews who were causing the snow. I'm telling you, you know, for people who can cause a lot of shit, you think the Jews would have uh, not had so many rough spots in history. (laughs) Right. They control the weather, they control the media, (laughs) but still somehow it doesn't seem to break their way every now and then. (laughs) I could see see how it's confusing because we do have a holiday where we remember how we made it rain frogs on the Egyptians. (laughs) Oh, maybe we do control the weather. Yeah, plague Plague of frogs is the best because it's placed well. Like there was an escalation to it where death of the firstborn son has to happen at the end because you can't have death of the firstborn son and then frogs. Right. <laughs> you got to close strong. Right. That does right. it. A mean cat. Like, all the, right, come on. Yeah, yeah. The first one was blood all over your fucking area. That's the first one. Blood. Yeah. Rivers of blood was gross and locusts. <laughs> um, there's Hot a couple lice. that were pretty bad. I think they had, did they have boils too? Uh, I thought that's so. some sort of parasite. But the frogs, because I always felt like if you did birth of the firstborn, death of the firstborn son and then frogs, I think the Egyptians would have said, well, maybe we turn the corner here. <laughs> right? The pandemic is almost over. Exactly. Time to open the movie theaters right by the pyramid. 
I you know what? If I worked with one of these uh, right wing news shows, I really I wonder if I could I wouldn't know I wouldn't know where the line is for anything. I'd be like, so the insurrection, this is this is a big deal. Yes, Keith, it's a big fucking deal. OK, but Nazis weren't easy. OK, we have to stick with that. All right. We made a mistake. What are you going to do? All right. We're going to leave uh, with a uh, nice story to. Uh, I don't trust you. 16 years. <laughs> I do not trust this. She's Can we wised just put, up. Yeah. Put me down for I don't know if this is going to be nice. OK, just like in silent <laughs> trailers. You don't know if I'm really looking at Tom Cruise when I say it's Tom Cruise. We don't know if it's about to be a good story. This is just a heads up. Brace yourselves if you need a brace. You know, hold a pillow, hold your mate. Here we go. A man in India was stabbed to death by his rooster after attaching a three inch knife to its leg for an illegal cockfight. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> That's sweet. Do That's I know great. Keith? 16 years. <laughs> Amazing. It's a beautiful. That's story. awesome. Yeah. That's then. Then Gula Satish, 45 years old, was stabbed in the groin. That's how he died. I love when people the- are my age in the story. I'm yeah, like, oh, they I know should know exactly, better, right? Well, I know exactly where you, what you should and shouldn't know better, kind of, you know, and I'm like, no, we know that. We know that by now. We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, stabbed in the groin when the bird uh, he had just armed for the fight fluttered in panic. He died on the way to the hospital. By the way, you get two years in prison over there in India if you uh, have a cockfight. It's, it's just it's funny when they decide on it. Like two years is good. I mean, it shouldn't ruin a person's life. <laughs> But it's got to be significant. Uh, two years is a long time. How about that? Don't do it. Don't <laughs> do it. You know, sometimes you got to do it to impress a lady. Just don't do it. You don't have to do it. So now you do it, you die. I don't think that's yeah. Too much. Or or fight yourself. Why? Why bring a chicken in? Like, if yeah. you really need money that badly, like yeah. strap a strap a knife to your foot. Uh, well, I feel like he. Out, Cuba, he's not a good fighter. He lost to the chicken. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> These suggestions got are shanked. Really yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of so sad. Oh, sorry. For, go ahead. <laughs> for for him or for the chicken? No, because like he must have realized how great a fighter the chicken was. Like <laughs> as he was dying, it's bittersweet. I'm so proud of you. You know, whenever I hear about someone dying in a way like that, part of me thinks if it wasn't that, it would have been something else relatively soon. <laughs> Right. Because it's not like you lead an exemplary life and then you think, what if I tied a knife to a chicken? (laughs) You know, you don't just have that idea in isolation. You don't you don't you don't leave. You're not working away from the campus. It's at Stanford University and you've just filled up a blackboard with some huge equation on the way home. You think, you know what else I should do? You think there's like a gateway other activities that I'm saying it's not the first it's not the first wrong choice he's made. It just turned out to be the last. One. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like if we talk to his exes, they might have a couple stories. Yes. He, they're not going to say, oh, I'm completely surprised to hear this. <laughs> right. He did. No, nah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. I was. Um, at, we were talking about this the other day and it's like, you know, I, I learned over my years. Uh, maybe it's something that this guy didn't learn is that. It is exactly like what Joe is saying. There are friends that maybe go like, man, and then I got into a fight and you're like, oh, my God, somebody punch you like some you got into a physical fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you realize in your history with this friend, uh, they're always getting into a physical fight. And it's like, yeah. wait a minute. I, how is everybody always picking on you? It's like, I know everyone's always picking on me. No, it's starting to feel a little different than that, because I don't I I get mouthy. I live in New York City. Things get near a fight. But to actually be in a physical fight over and over again, I'm going to put that on you now. Oh, yeah. I have a friend like that. She's always getting into conflicts. And whenever she tells me the story, it's maybe not even a minute in where I realize not only can I tell this is completely your fault, (laughs) but I'm hearing your side. (laughs) Even in your side, this is clearly your fault. But that's the way her world is constantly people causing fights with her. And she doesn't realize that she's like she's like walking around on fire all the time. She does not realize it. It's like every Craigslist ad for a roommate that says no drama. I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, no, that's a problem. That's you. (laughs) Right. Right. I never had to write that. Uh, Follow (laughs) Joe online at Joe DeVito comedy and check out the special. You can Google dry bar comedy. It's millions. Millions are watching it. Millions are loving it. And congratulations. Thank you. 
Uh, Suba, the uh, Twitter account is Suba, S-U-B-H-A-H. Instagram is Subhaha, H-A-H-A. And TikTok, Suba <laughs> Comedy. Do you do, do the you do the TikTok dances, right? Two arms uh, on the left, two arms on the right. Even it out on the bottom with the leg, then on the other leg, then three on the left, then three on the right. I think I can TikTok dance. I think well, we I feel just like did. people getting me to dance are relatives at their wedding. Like that's the only time I'm gonna learn a routine. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just post stand up and do dumb shit like that. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not I can't I can't like do a stanky leg or whatever the fuck is popular now. I think that was popular in the 90s. That's how out of touch I am. Uh, Joe just learned it. Yeah, I did. And I have ligament damage now. I tore an ACL. Uh, let me say this. In all sincerity, the fact that Hemd and I are getting together this week, by the way, I'm going to be uh, I'm, I'm excited for this food. Hemda. You like dessert? What's the restaurant? What's the restaurant? You like dessert? <laughs> I dare you to say it. I dare you. I will give you an extra hundred dollars to spend on your meal <laughs> from my salary. <laughs> if you tell me right now what the restaurant is. Well, it's steakhouse. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to be celebrating virtually, of course, uh, together. 16 years of podcasting. That's a that's a big deal. And since I know about feelings now, I know uh, I know what it entails. So thank you for listening. You literally change our lives. Peace, love and Keith and the girl. Keith and the girl.com.